Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500 and welcome back to a comprehensive how-to video. Lots and lots of people who own Fiat 500s in our baths have problems with their Blue and Me and quite often that Blue and Me unit needs to be replaced. This is a Blue and Me unit. This is one that has been repaired and in this car here I'm going to replace it because the one in this car is faulty and doesn't work. Flashing mileage, nothing happens on the buttons. When you press the buttons it just doesn't work doesn't have the usual thing where it causes a parasitic drain, that's not happening yet, but it needs to be replaced. The lady wants to be able to use the Bluetooth. So I suggested she puts in another third party stereo, but she says no, she wants to put the original, she wants it to be as it should be. So I'm gonna show you step by step how we do this. Let's start off and I'll explain exactly what we need to do to get to this and to get it out. Let's go. Right, okay, to start with, what we need to do, for those of you who don't know, the Blue and Me unit is behind this panel here. So to get to it, this panel needs to come off. To get that off easily, we need to take the rear seat base out. A lot of people will take the seat backs out. You don't really need to do that. And that's a hassle that you don't really need to, to do. So all we do to get the seat base out is we've got two, I think they're 15 mil bolts. So we just undo those two 15 mil bolts and then that seat base then pulls out. We have to, then we have to take this off, which is, we don't have to take it off, we just have to lift it out of the way. We've got some screws on that. Uh, there's more screws down there. We have to take the seat belt off of here. We have to drop the rubber down, down the side of the door. We have to take this off. Uh, we have to move that down out of the way. Um, there's a screw in the boot to undo there. Uh, we'll, we'll, the seat back will flop backwards and forwards just so we can uh, move around. Um, it, when, once we get all the bolts undone, um, that will have to be disconnected down there on the pre-tensioner. The pre-tensioner gets fed through. Um, once all the bolts are undone, we come onto the final bolt, which is in that corner, which is a, a, a dodgy one because they can break. Uh, and then once that comes out, we then just pull it off, it's on poppers. And then we'll show you how to actually get the thing itself out. So let's do it, I'll show you step by step how we do it, and hopefully that will help you if you need to do it. Let's go, let's get on with it. Right, okay, first thing we need to do is we got a, a screw here, and we got a screw just there. So all we need on there is just a normal Phillips screwdriver, and we just get those undone, let me do that. Right, remove these screws. And then down here, we just need to pull, pull this out of the way. We don't need to take it off. That just snaps off the poppers and you can just put it there like that out of the way. And then under here, we have another screw. That's that. And that's it for that bit. And then we've got these two screws to undo here which are 16 mil. I say screws, I mean bolts. I'll go around the other side and do the other one. And then all we do is we pull the seat out and it comes out like that. And we just get that out of the way. And then what we need to do is we need to remove this, drop this down out of the way. So I'm trying to keep out the way of the camera if I can. So we want a 17 mil socket and all we do is buzz that off. Let that drop down. And then we need to take this off and then under here we will find, let me just put angle of camera. Then we need to, if we just drop this rubber down, so just grab, get hold of it and pull it. If you can, it's easier actually if you do it from outside the car. Right, pull the rubber off and then we just need to ease this off. It's held on by poppers. So carefully pull it off, there you go. So you've got two poppers at the bottom and then you've got one, sorry, two poppers at the bottom and you've got one little clip at the top. 
that goes into there. So once you get that off, get that out of the way. And then we've got another screw just there. Take that out. And then what we'll do is we're gonna go around to the back of the car and we'll show you how to, uh, how to drop this down to get this out of the way. Let's do that. Okay, right, we're around the back of the car uh, and all we need to do is undo two screws. We've got a screw under here, another Phillips screw under there, and then we've got another screw just there. So we just need to, uh, obviously you put the seat back forward a little bit and we'll just undo those screws. I won't film that while I'm doing a couple of screws so, uh, and I'm holding the camera so I can't do it at the same time. <laughs> So we'll undo those screws and then this is just held on by poppers. It is already coming off a little bit, um, but we'll get that off and just drop it down. It doesn't need to come off completely because the seat belt is threaded through it. It just needs to be released out of the way so we can then drop down. Uh, we can release the back of that side panel. So I'll just get those screws undone and then we'll come straight back. All right, screws are out. So we just release that on its poppers like that. And we just leave that like that. Don't need to uh, remove it at all. Just leave it lying in the back like that. Right, before we go back and uh, start taking all the poppers out, what we need to do is we need to try and ensure as much as we can that that bolt down there won't snap when we take it out. Now, if you do it with a socket wrench, it's more likely to snap. If you do it with a power wrench like that, um, you've got more chance of it not snapping. And another way to try and prevent it from snapping is if we go down here, You'll see just there, if we can focus on that, that's the other end of that bolt. And as you can see, it comes to the outside world. So because of that, it gets caked in mud, it rusts, and that's what causes it to snap. So what we do, I'm gonna get a wire brush, I'm gonna brush it as best I can, and then we're gonna soak it in some WD-40. So let's just get a wire brush and we'll see if we can wire brush it a little bit. Right, so I've brushed it as best I can and I've absolutely soaked it in WD-40. In fact, I'm going to put a bit more on. I've got a bit of cardboard down here just to catch the drips. Absolutely soak it in WD-40. That will hopefully stop it from breaking when it comes out. Because if it does, ideally you need to drill it out, which I wouldn't be doing. What I sometimes do if this does happen is I use one of the seat belt bolts at the back. Uh, sorry, one of these bolts at the back to anchor the seat belt, which isn't ideal, but drilling that out is a bit of a nightmare. So we hope by doing that, it stops it from seizing up and ending up snapping. So we'll go back, we'll uh, go back in the car and we'll get that um, bolt out. So it's a 13 mil and you just need to angle the seat a little bit just so you can get to it in a straight line and hopefully it'll come out nice and straight and we'll release that seat belt anchor at the bottom. Let's do it. Right, so apart from, apart from the, um, oh, we need, I'll tell you what we haven't done is we need a seat belt. We need a, a, a flat headed screwdriver to um, disconnect that seat belt down there. Let me just go grab one of those and we'll do that. Right, I've just undone that. I'll show you when I put it back on how we did it. Um, but it's, just, it's literally just a screw that you turn that releases it. Now when, what we need to do is take this off on its poppers. So the only thing that's holding it on is that one bolt down the bottom that we've still got to get out plus the poppers. So if we do the poppers first, so you just take it firmly and pull and then it will come out from its poppers. And then to get the seat belt out, you just take that bit out. Hopefully you can see that. Feed it through out the way, just to get it out of the way. And then you need to, when you, when you take this off finally, what you need to do, excuse the noise of the dustman in the background, uh, you need to lift it over the, um, the wire of the, can you see it down there? Hopefully you can see it, the wire of the pretensioner. But before we do that, I'm gonna get this bolt undone. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna get this into the camera, but I will try and see if you can see it. But you've just gotta do, an element of praying and you get the um you get the get it on an extension bar with a 13 mil get it on the nut use a power wrench if you've got one if not i suggest you borrow one or buy one otherwise you are taking a chance of it snapping it can snap doing it this way but hopefully by cleaning it up a little bit 
with the thread that you can see in the wheel arch, hopefully that'll be enough to stop it from snapping. Now, you're not gonna be able to see this properly, but I'm gonna get this on the bolt in a straight line, as straight as I can get it, and then undo it. Here we go. And it's come off nice and cleanly. That's all down to the fact that I put WD-40 on that. It's come out nice and cleanly. Before we put that back in, we will grease it up and we'll also clean it up properly as well with the, with the wire brush. Just if this ever has to come out again, hopefully someone won't have the same problem. Now that won't come out, it's held on with a little paper washer thing. So we can just tip that out of the way, out the back. That is a relief to get that bit done. This is always a bit of a nervous moment when you do that. So that's that bit. Um, now we just need to lift this off. So what we're gonna do, if I can angle the camera down a little bit. Now there's an element of moving the seat back, backwards and forwards um, to get this out. So you need to lift it off, lift it over the thing. There'll be poppers on the back of it. Oh, you're, depending on what car you've got, you've probably got a, a light as well, a boot light. So that needs to come out as well. So just pop that out and disconnect the electrical connection if you can somehow if you can I'm gonna have to go around the other side and do that but yeah we just need to disconnect that won't be a sec so you got a little um little tab somewhere where is it little tab there just depress that with a screwdriver and it will pull out like that just leave that lying in the boot and then we go back around to the front of the car or up to the front of the car into the car <coughs> And it's now just a matter of pulling this off, which should come off fairly easy now. There you go. It is easier if the back seat's not there, but um, there you go. It's off nicely, so we'll take that out of the car, get that out of the way, and as we can see, we've now exposed the blue me unit, which is here. So as you can see, that silver cage there, it's held in by three rivets, which we're gonna drill out. Now, there are some people who say, you don't need to do that. You can actually get to the bolts uh, and undo the nuts that are on the back. Now, you could get to that one, you can get to that one, but I don't think you can get to that one. The, sorry, not the bolts on here, because it's not bolts. Um, it's bolted into the cage, and I don't know how you can get to those. But other people have said they've done it. I can see one there, but I have always just drilled it out. The new one I've got comes with a cage, and even if it doesn't come with a cage, you can just reuse your old cage. But you will have to rivet it back in again. So hopefully you've got a rivet gun as well. But uh, let's just get that back panel out of the way and then we'll get the drill and we'll get those rivets drilled out. Let's do it. Right, so what I use to do this is I use a, a Bosch hammer drill. Um, I have it on hammer and I use a six millimetre masonry bit. I'm sure some people will use HSS, high speed steel, but I prefer to use a, a drill on hammer. And here we go. So you just get the drill in the center. This is gonna make a lot of noise. So I'm just gonna put this on fast forward now so you don't get deafened with all the noise. And as soon as we've got those three rivets out, we'll come back. Okay, that's that rivets out. And then all we do is we lift the unit out over there. And then we'll see we've got the blue connector and we just release the connector. And there it is, that's it out. Now to put it all back, put it, put it all back again, we obviously need to do the same in reverse. If you've got any bits of rivet left in there, just push them through. They should just go through okay. If not, bit of drill, and that's the rivets out. Okay, there you go, that's that. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to go and get the new one, we'll plug it in, and then we'll put the battery back in the car, and then we'll test it to make sure it works before we put it all back in again. Let's do that. Okay, so this is the new one, which is, this is one that came out of another car which I had repaired, and I've had it sitting on the shelf ever since. Um, so we put the plug in, 
and then we put it down here into position hopefully I think I've got it around the right way <laughs> fiddly there we go so that's in the right way it's plugged in so I'll say before we rivet that in I'm going to test it to make sure it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to reconnect the battery, go around to the front of the car, sit in the passenger, uh, sit in the driver's seat, switch it on, and see if we can get it to connect. And obviously something to happen when we press the Windows button on the uh, steering wheel. Let's do it. Let's hopefully fingers crossed, and it's going to work. Right here we are in the car. So if we switch the ignition on, uh, the mileage will flash um, because. It's a, it's a one that's not recognized in the car. I think the mileage was flashing on this car anyway um, because of the error. But hopefully, when we'll turn the stereo on, turn the volume down, uh, and hopefully we'll push the Windows button and it will work. There you go, blue and me voice. So it is working. So, please repeat. Oh, phone. Command not available. That's because I haven't, uh, Let's try it again. Settings. Settings. The commands available are user data and pairing. Pairing. User pairing in progress. So it is working. Um, so I haven't obviously connected my phone. Uh, and as, as you the see. The code is 2561. To pair up, look for the blue and me with your device and insert the pin code displayed. Okay, so we know that's going to work now, which is good. Okay, so um, as I say, the mileage is flashing, so we'll need a proxy alignment, but now we need to get everything back together again. So let's do that. And the lady will be, I'm sure, very, very pleased that this is all working. Okay, so now it's in position and we know it works. What we need to do is rivet it back in. So I've got a blind rivet gun and I've got some little rivets. So it's three rivets. So you put the rivets in your rivet gun. There are various types. You can get ones of these that I've actually got one, but I've not had much luck with it, where you can actually put them on the end of a drill. Um, I've never actually tried it because the drill I own, the only drill I had that I tried it on, cordless drill, was that such a rubbish drill. It didn't have enough oomph to do it. And I've never tried it since, but I must do that because it'll be a lot easier. You see, I've put my gloves on because this is really tough on the hands using these. So we put that in, squeeze it, keep squeezing until it goes pop, which is why it's called a pop rivet. Pop goes the weasel. Do the same on the other two. And the last one. Nearly there. There we go. That's all in now in, nice and sturdy. So that's that done. We can put that away. Okay, what we need to do now is put everything back together again. We know everything's working, and obviously we do it in reverse. So the first thing we're gonna do is put that back panel back in. Um, again, same as we did before, just sort of adjust the seat backwards and forwards uh, until it slides into position, push it in on the poppers, and, um, and then we'll do all the bits and pieces up. So let me just get the back panel on and then we'll come straight back. Okay, right, so we've uh, got that back in position. We've thread the seat belt back through. We haven't put that bolt back in yet. What I'm gonna do first is position it on the poppers and get those poppers pushed back in. And there's obviously there's some on the back as well. That one needs to pop in like that, which it is. Uh, then what we need to do is we need to get that bolt, whatever I've done with it, uh, and then we need to get that bolt cleaned and then put back in. So I'm just going to clean that up and then we'll come back. Once we've got that bolt in, we can then fix this piece back on, fix the seat belt. Oh, of course, the bolt, I haven't got, it, got the bolt because it's, it's on here, of course, isn't it? So I'm just going to clean that up. Uh, we'll screw that back in again. And uh, yeah, all is good. Uh, and then we will uh, continue on putting all the bits and pieces back together. So let me just clean that up. We'll screw that back in and go from there. Right, so I've cleaned it up. Uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease around it before we put it all back in. But just a tiny bit of grease, just to protect it. So it'll help it go in and then it will protect it from the elements 
once it's in there. So I'm not sure if we can start this off by hand or not. I think it's a bit fiddly to get in there, but we'll give it a go. He says, pull the seat down a little bit. Yeah, no, I think it's a bit too fiddly down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the drill to put it in. So we line it up, line it up with a hole, like so. And there it is, back in again. Perfect. It's always good when you get that in without breaking it. I mean, it doesn't tend to break when it goes in, it's, it's more when it goes out, when it's coming out. But um, yeah, that's why sometimes people don't take these out. And I do actually advise people, especially if you haven't got an impact wrench like that, an electric impact wrench, is to, is to um, leave that. And if, if you're doing a seat belt and you need to take this off, you can get to a seat belt with, just by pulling this back. You can get to the bolts on a seat belt. But to get that blue, to get the, uh, enough room for a drill in there, you really do need to take that off. But it is always a bit of a panic. So let's just get this back quarter panel back on. Um, and that'll be the next thing. Okay. So we need to now get this bit back on. Get it around the right way. Untwist it from the seat belt. So when you put that bolt back in, make sure that this hasn't fallen out, because it can do that. Uh, to get this back on, it's probably wise to take that off a little bit as well. And then we've got to line, as before, we've got to line up the screws, uh, line up the tabs, I should say, which can have a habit of falling out. Can be a bit of trial and error with this. So we, we know that this one was actually out, wasn't it? It wasn't in properly. We don't know why. So I'm gonna come around the other side and try and do that if I can, because it's a bit tricky. Yeah, we don't know why that wasn't in there properly. Better. Go around the other side again. They're right pain, these. I don't like doing these. They really are a pain. There we go. Oh, just, just the bottom piece now. Which doesn't, that's it, that's it. Now we get a screw, or the two screws. And then we put those screws, we've got the one screw back down here to put in, and then the other one just here. Let me do those. Again, can be fiddly sometimes. Oh, I know what we haven't done. We need to get the wire through for the light, which you hope, of course, you haven't lost in there somewhere. There it is. Plug that back in. Oh, power's still on. I didn't realise. I thought I'd disconnected the battery. Obviously not. I suppose I had the battery connected when I did the um, Blue and Me thing, so I need to, turn, I need to disconnect that just so I don't waste power, really. So get that screw in. Like that. Get the other screw in here. Like that. I think after we've done this, we can then put the back seat up. Properly, and then we can threadle that back over there in position. I tend to hit that with a mallet, which I'll do in a minute, just to make sure it goes back properly. Sometimes it doesn't. There we go. That's back in properly. Okay, that's that done. Then we can put that back on and then we can tip the seat back up. Okay, now, so this is all on nice and stable. So we need to put the screw back in there. Like so. And where's my other bit of trim gone? I've lost the other bit of trim for the uh, 
What have I done with that? <laughs> it's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's under the, underneath the camera. Bear with me. There we go. Right. <laughs> so then we need to put this bit back on. So it's just a matter of, again, lining up the poppers. It's also held on quite a lot by the rubber bit that goes around the door. They're not, they're not the best, to be honest. Um, and then we need to get our socket, uh, wherever I've done with that. All right, we need to uh, reconnect this with the 17 mil. Now, sometimes these are easier to put on with a wrench, with a power wrench. Uh, as it happens at the moment, I've got the 17 mil on an ordinary wrench, so we will do it with this, hopefully. Now, you don't want to do it up too tight, but equally, you don't want to act a bit too loose, because it needs to move for the seat belt. So I think that's okay. And then we snap that bit back over there. That will help to hold that on. And then we will need to put the seat belt down here. We need to clip, that will just push on. Actually, sometimes it doesn't just push on like it didn't then because if I can find a flat headed screwdriver, which I seem to have mislaid, the screw has stayed, when you open the screw, which is there to release it, the screw stays where it is. So you just need to turn the screw a little bit. So let me just grab a, flat bladed screwdriver again and we'll reseat that and I'll show you it properly. Right, so when you take it off, where are we? There. When you take it off, it's just a screwdriver in there and you just turn that. And sometimes it just gets stuck a little bit and you have to just, uh... actually if you put it on the wrong way it doesn't help. No, why is it not going on? Might have to turn it to get it on. There you go. Yeah, for, the, for some reason on this one, we had to turn it. You don't normally have to do that. So that's the seat belt on. That back seat belt is done and done up. So the only thing left to do now is to put, the, um, put these base panels back on, put the rubber back on, and then uh, put the rear seat back in, and then we're done. Right, so now all we need to do is get the rubber on into position. It's peeled back quite away. We didn't really need to peel it back quite so far. It just, I think it happens to have just fallen off a little bit, but yeah, you don't need to do it so far as it's done on this car. It's literally just to get it out of the way. Right, there you go. Just make sure that's all pushed in properly, which it is. We'll give that a wipe over with the cloth. If you use the back of your fist to do this all the time, you end up getting bruised, bruised hand just here, which I've got numerous times because I'm a snowflake. Right, that's that bit. And then the only thing we've got left to do now it's put, we've got three screws left. Luckily we haven't lost any screws, which is always a bonus. We'll put the screws back in the bottom of this panel here. Screw that down. And then put this one back on. Make sure it snaps back properly. Again, it sometimes it, it, it doesn't. There we go. That's better. I'm using the back of my hand again, I can feel it hurting. And I've lost my Phillips screwdriver. What I've done with that. There it is. And we put these two screws back in. Right, 
that's the final screw and then the only thing we've got left to do is put the rear seats back in so uh, let's just get those in nope put it in the right way helps so the easy way to do this i find hopefully you can see i'm not sure you can actually let me get a bit closer yeah i'm not sure you're gonna be able to see this but with the seat belts they can be a bit of a nightmare to to get the um things through so what i do is i push it in up a little bit plug it in if you can it's a bit fiddly but push the seat belt through and then plug it into the actual seat belt clasp and then pull the whole thing through that's the best way i find to do it so basically what i did there was feed the actual seat belt feed the actual seat belt down into the hole plug it into the actual clasp and then pull the entire thing through that's the easiest way by far of um getting those to come through and then all we need to do is do up two bolts and that's it done well i don't think <laughs> i had just done the proxy alignment uh, and i don't think it actually i, was, I don't think i was filming because the camera turned itself off but basically the mileage was flashing um i went and did the proxy alignment if you want to see how to do a proxy alignment i will put the link uh, above now and i will also put it at the end because i haven't filmed it so there's no point me doing it again because it won't do it because it's already done it so yeah it's done it and now the mileage is not flashing so if we press the button on the stereo on the steering wheel oh the stereo is not on so let's turn the stereo on first blue and me voice there you go pair please make a selection pair. Say help help the commands available are message reader, settings, media player, or cancel. Cancel. There you go. So that is working perfectly. Uh, no mileage is flashing. All I need to do is set the clock and we're done. So that's it. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, my description and my filming of how to do that has made it easier for you. Hopefully, I've got everything in on camera. There were a couple of occasions where I'm not sure it was recording. <laughs> So I, when I put this video together, I will try and incorporate those bits, a bit like the proxy alignment I just did. I'm not sure it was filming when I did that. So I will link to doing a proxy alignment um, at the end of this video. And I did link to it when I was talking about it. So uh, hopefully uh, if you don't know how to do the proxy alignment and that will um, explain how you, how you do it. Obviously you need multi ECU scan and, a, and a, an Elm adapter with a yellow cable to be able to do that. Uh, Fiat will charge you around 120 pounds to, um, to do that. But uh, yeah, that is it. So yeah, any questions you've got, give me a shout. Uh, there are other videos in the how-to series about Blue and Me, if you want to ask any, any, if you want to, any, any more information about them. Uh, for those of you who have seen my video on um, updating it to later versions of the software, uh, you will see on that video that I go to uh, the Blue and Me website. Fiat have actually shut that Blue and Me website down now. So you can't do that. However, the, all of the updaters are available from the Fiat Forum. I will put the link in the description, but it's fiatforum.com. You can download the language files, the updaters, everything. But that's it. So hopefully it's been educational. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, click on the subscribe link, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. And until the next one, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.